Hello to everybody. How are we all doing? It has been far too long, hasn't it? This feels weird doing it again, honestly. <laughs> but uh, if you're wondering where I've been and you don't follow me on Twitter or anything, uh, I was on a business trip actually. I went to Canada, and uh, when I returned, I had to. I have a, had a very hectic week last week, so I didn't do anything. But uh, I am back. I hope to be back like regularly again, because I did miss this stuff and I did miss playing these games. But uh, in the meantime, I was just kind of like trying to recover from those two weeks being abroad. And uh, let me tell ya. Um, Canada's fucking cold. <laughs> like, Jesus fucking Christ. Let me see the, the lowest temperature. Let me see it. I'm gonna convert it to uh, Fahrenheit. So the lowest temperature I experienced over there was like minus 18 Celsius, which translates to minus 0 0 0.4 Fahrenheit. So it was very cold. Uh, that day I completely refused to go outside because the the steps to our uh, Airbnb were like frozen and I nearly tripped like three times and besides it was snowing and raining all the time and it, the snow wasn't even snow it was like ice it makes a lot more sense when you know what snow is like but uh, it's like snow is like nice and snow is like bees and ice is like wasps <laughs> that's how I would describe it uh, as someone who has like limited experience with it but yeah uh, that's where I've been and uh, Good god, I didn't think I would be talking this much, but apparently I am. Hello, I missed the sound of my own fucking voice, apparently. How are we all doing? <sighs> but yeah, and uh, I got here uh, and it's cold here as well, so that's weird. It's been extremely weird. I don't know, this like entire thing disrupted my my everything, honestly. I feel, I feel very weird. Alright, let's stop fucking talking and just go into the game immediately. Which, by the way, I need to put on the sound settings because my computer it likes to be a bitch about that. Let's see here. There. Alright, give it a second. There we are. I think. Yep, there we go. All right, I have been missing this game so much. Uh, I did get a little bit distracted playing uh, Shin Megami Tensei though, so I've been at least entertained. But uh, thank you very much, Mr. Carr. My window is really weird in that it doesn't like to shut. It doesn't. It doesn't really close. So I had to open it for to make some uh, air current flow in, and uh, now it doesn't close. But oh well. Let's just continue. I have forgotten entirely where we were, but I think the last thing we did was give the that girl a hat and... Oh, here we are. Hey, was there something you needed? Um... Well, well. Bringing him that new bird sure made a difference in his attitude. Well, I'm leaving. Who are you? Boy, am I ever oh. so grateful to you, officer. But I'm not the only one who wants to thank you. I forgot about these guys. Right, the cryptid. Talk to you later then. Hey, Lena. Oh, sweetie, I don't even know how to thank you for finding my husband and helping him out. I hope we haven't been too much trouble for you. Just doing my job, ma'am. It was a truly epic long distance distance trek. It was, I was, it was just on my way while I was working on the case. I'm basically also a cryptozoologist now. I knew it. <laughs> Kim. I'm not surprised. It's already getting out of hand. Kim. Well, in that case, sweetie, let me give you a small token of my gratitude. Oh my god. It's a tie, mask in origin. The pin is an antique, quite special to the cryptozoological community. Oh my gosh. The little silvery knob holding the tie together feels warm in your hand. It's in the shape of an avian skull with eight eyes. Maybe you could convince her to tell you about some cool cryptids? Plus two, have the Terratorn tie. Tell me! No. 
You don't have any new winning tactics to get the woman to spill the beans about cryptids. I'm so sad. Okay, well, you never told me you've seen the plasmid. Oh, you don't want to hear about some old woman's ramblings. Ramblings? Ma'am. Nonsense. Your description of the phasmid is the most precise I've ever heard. But darling, I didn't even get the size of it right. Measuring things is important. How did she get the size? Huh. You were a child, my dear. Really. It's extraordinary oh. what you were able to describe. Now go on. Tell our friend about it. He's proven his interest in the field. Reflexively, the lieutenant read his, his familiar notebook. Oh, you're taking notes, aren't you? Well, it was summer. <laughs> I was building a racing track out of sand on the beach near a tall stand of reeds. Quite a tall one. Many times my height, I remember. When all of a sudden... Wait, where was this and how old were you? Ah, I'm getting ahead of myself. I was five and a half in Betancourt in the suburbs. Oh, my man. grandmother had a summer home there. Okay. She'd just started forming memories. Real memories. Not the billowy haze of infanthood. Well, what happened? The strangest moment of my life. I looked up and one of the reeds moved. Not like a plant, but like a living thing. It stood up and looked at me. Oh, man. Its body unfolded like some antique toy. I've never seen anything like it. It was a mantis, ma'am. I didn't know this can happen, so I reached my arm and touched the thing. It felt just like a stalk of reed, but it moved, swaying, towering above me. After a while, 20 seconds, a minute maybe, it left, went into the reeds. Did you follow it? I tried, but I was only a child. There was mud and high water. I couldn't see it anymore. I was just standing there, knee-deep in mud, looking around me. Oh. Where did you go? Don't go. Then what? I ran back home to my grandmother and asked her if reeds could walk and told her they were looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> of course, she just laughed at me, but I knew what I'd seen. For years, it was a story I told at parties when I wanted to impress boys. That sort of thing. <laughs> of course... Most people just took it as a strange, amusing anecdote. So did I, honestly. But then I met Morel. We were on a date. Can you imagine? Oh my God. She tells me a story, and it's the most detailed report of the Insulindian phasmid I've ever heard. The sounds. She told me it hissed. Hissed? It did, yes. Like reeds in a gust of wind. The way it moved, the color. How some of its limbs were white, like marble. It matched perfectly with what I know from other accounts. It was amazing. This sounds like it was low at first sight. If it weren't for Lena, I might have given up hope years ago. It's no exaggeration to say that she restored my faith in my profession. Oh, You were on a date? Our first, yes. Aww. The glance is tender, yes, but tempered by something else. A thought she can't express, even to him. Huh. Interesting. Its limbs are white? Not all of them. There is some white coloration reported, along with beige, where the camouflage ends. How big was it? It's hard to say how big things are when you're quite small yourself. To me, it seemed to be taller than I was then, but that's probably not the case. What if it is the case? Well, maybe you imagined it? Lena? No. Kim, what do you think of this? I thought it was a wonderful story, man. <laughs> but I don't believe it. A child left unattended on a warm day. Children make up stories and then end up believing them. Aw, oh, maybe you imagined it, Lena? How could she? Who imagines this? She didn't know about the phasmid. This is the main thing here. What makes it a confirmed sighting? She had no <laughs> previous knowledge of the insect. So she couldn't have made it up. Or imagined it. That's true, yes. I'm almost certain neither my mother nor my grandmother knew of it. It was only when I started telling my story as a teenager that boys would tell me, Lena, 
You trying to tell us you saw the Insul Indian Phasmid out there in those reeds? Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> they just give me a cider and ruffle my hair and tell me to stop dreaming. But I saw it. Thank you for sharing this with me. You're welcome, sweetie. I do appreciate the chance to relive it whenever I get one. It was just... <sighs> such an impossibly sunshiny day. Aww. So warm. I love her. And she could get up and walk right into the reeds on her own. Into the mud. Anywhere. I want this. How many skill points do I have? I have two left. I can do suggestion again. Give it. Give it. Damn it. Lena. Oh, hello, sweetie. Tell me more. So nice to see you again. Sometimes the most charming thing you can do yes. is be reasonable in your requests. Ma'am, could you tell me about one, just one more interesting cryptid? The Insulidian Phasmid was great. I suppose you could use a break and I could use a distraction. One cryptid, like you said. One. This can't turn into some kind of cryptid extravaganza. <laughs> we have things to do. Okay, Kim, just one little crypt promise. Cryptid extravaganza, I like the sound of that. Just one little cryptid, I promise. He nods and assumes a waiting posture. <laughs> Ooh, tough choice there. Is this bird a cryptid? It's the tie she gave you. What's the biggest cryptid? Is this bird a cryptid? No. It's the cryptid. <gasps> Wow, the cryptid? Oh, yes. Okay, what is this bird? The eight-eyed teratorn, the largest flying avian ever discovered with a wingspan of 11.5 meters. Oh my god. It was thought to have gone extinct 3,500 years ago. Some even doubted the fossils were real. A mutation, they said. Until... <gasps> mutation? <laughs> All of evolution is a mutation. He's right, though. Until? Until it was sighted by renowned Gottwaldian explorer and naturalist Uwe Plattenkalk in 21. I need to hear about the sighting. It happened on a botanical expedition into the vast and unexplored Oamrau Canyon in southeast Ilmara. Dr. Plattenkalk got separated from his group during a sandstorm. Okay, and... Uh Uamaro is? The world's largest canyon system, sweetie. Ah. It's a barren waste east of the Erg Desert. An ancient riverbed completely dried up. And what happened? Alone in the blasted desert heat, the doctor wandered eastward, where man hasn't stepped foot in over a thousand years since the fall of Pericarnassus. He was lost without any navigation equipment and desperately low on water. After a day or two, he noticed a bird high in the noon sky. A great black bird, it seemed gargantuan. Honestly, it did just sound like the guy was dehydrated and hallucinating. <laughs> Every now and then, the bird would dive down to feed on an animal carcass somewhere on the horizon. But by the time Uva got there, the Teratorn had taken off already and the carcass was picked clean. This happened many times. It followed him? More like he followed it. A bird that big has many liters of blood in it and he was dying of thirst. <laughs> oh my For God. many days, Dr. Plottenkult followed the Tetatorn until they reached a great canyon wall where the bird finally landed to rest. A professor climbed up there with a rock in his hand. He found the bird sleeping with his head tucked under its wing. Oh. A great black pile of feathers on the perch. So he approached, slowly squeezing the rock in his fist. Then the Tetatorn suddenly looked at him. He could see it had eight eyes, four on either side of its skull, like a spider. And the man couldn't move. He was paralyzed, frozen into place with the rock in his hand, Oh my god. Whatever he did, he could not get closer to the bird. Why? The bird was controlling his mind. What? Kept him from approaching. He could step back. Every time he stepped forward, paralysis. 
Uva spent three days trying until the bird flew away. Oh, hold on, how did he survive to tell the story? An eight-eyed mind-controlling bird, fuck yes. <laughs> how did he survive to tell the story? The eight-eyed Teratorn was indifferent to him, as long as he didn't get closer than two steps. It even let him feed on some carcasses up there, and the two unfertilized eggs it left behind. An eight-eyed mind-controlling bird. Fuck yes. Come on, Anoe. Fuck yes. Absolutely, sweetie. <laughs> Cryptozoologists have been tracing it ever since, but Wamrao is vast, mysterious, and holds many secrets. Modern radar telemetry shows great promise. We will confirm this one by the end of the decade, latest. This one I liked. <laughs> Not only does it have eight eyes and is a living fossil, and the largest bird ever to live. It also does mind control. Kim. He's sincere. He likes the audacity of it. <laughs> so that was the last anyone saw of it? Sadly, yes. But there are numerous reports of eight-eyed bird skulls from Il Mara. And then there's the striking resemblance to the Periconassian Imperial Eagle. An ancient heraldic symbol that is hard to pass off as coincidence. The Imperial Eagle, too, had eight eyes. Oh? Not really. It's just stylization. <laughs> the way they drew eyes. It's not a zoological drawing. Very, very hard. This one's very <laughs> famous. Everyone knows it. People will be looking at that tie on you and thinking, that man is into cryptids. <laughs> So, what else do you want to know? That's adorable. Well, what's the biggest cryptid? That would be the giant of Kokonur. The giant lives in the most arid parts of the vast Kokonur desert in South Samara, casting a strange light across the barren wastes. Wait, what do you mean strange light? Um, mirage or a psychogenous luminance. Uh, and just how big is it? No one knows for sure. It is like an awful mountain appearing from below the horizon and expanding to cover almost a third of your field of vision. The fuck is it dangerous? The towering luminosity of Kokonur is a bad omen in local folklore. Some say it's a Fata Morgana, others, fate unimaginable. It's probably Fata Morgana. Who are you? <laughs> no animal can be that large. It's a mirage. Oh, my cat is claiming my lap right now. Hello, Impa. You darling. That's what makes it so peculiar. A species surviving at the very limits of scientific law. The giant of Kokonur must be the largest animal the planet can support. There are limits, you see, to how large a metabolism an ecosystem can beget. Some say a gravity anomaly below the Kokonur desert might allow the creature to grow to these gargantuan sizes. Great. This is great shit. We need more. Gravity anomaly? Digging it. Digging this parascientific stuff right here. <laughs> but what's the tiniest cryptid? Hey, you promised you'd only ask about one cryptid. Oh no, but Kim, don't you want to hear about another cryptid too? The lieutenant pauses. Thoughtfully, something in him breaks. Oh god. Ah, oh, fuck it. Let's have more cryptids. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh, I love this man. Well, the smallest cryptid is the Cryobacter tetlensis, <laughs> a unicellular bacterium. What? It was discovered in one of the northernmost points of Katla on the Boreal Plateau by renowned geologist Caitlin Mijanou some 70 years ago. What's so special about it? The bacterial colony Mijanou found had remained alive while frozen in ice for longer than anyone could reliably estimate. Certainly from before recorded history, Mijanou disappeared shortly after injecting herself with the bacteria she had brought back to study. No doubt in hopes of prolonging her own life. Wait, 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 wait. She injected herself with it? Yes. The bacteria had survived in the ice since times immemorial. It is not hard to see where she could have gotten the idea. My god. It's actually a little hard to see. 
but do go on. You mean there is an immortal geologist wandering the world? Yes, and she's quite mad too. Oh my god. After she treated herself with the bacteria, she stopped aging, but also became increasingly eccentric and irascible, so that even her oldest friends were forced to pull away. Oh. We can assume that she has been living somewhere in the wilderness for decades now. All alone except for the cryobacter catlensis coursing through her bloodstream. Holy shit. Well, what's the most dangerous cryptid? Actually, there were more questions there. I thought we'd agreed on just one cryptid, sweetie. But this is so much more interesting than my real job. Just one or two more, Lena, pretty please? Can't say no to that. Well, okay. bacterial Mishinu disappeared shortly after injecting herself with the bacteria she had brought back to study. No doubt in hopes of prolonging her own life. I don't understand. Why would you prolong your life? Being alive is terrible. I intend to live forever too, as a symbol. She was preparing for the end times. She wanted to witness the, the record and twilight proceedings. Memorial bacteria? <laughs> Immortal geologist? That's too wild. Being alive is terrible. Mm. Well... I intend to live forever, too. Everything has a price, sweetie. After Mijanu treated herself with the uh. we can assume that she has been living somewhere in the wilderness for decades now. Okay. All alone except for the cryobacter catlensis coursing through her bloodstream. Well, what's the most dangerous cryptid? The Gnome of Jerona. The Gnome of Jerona? That sounds terrifying. Oh, yes. None of its victims survived. Grieving relatives <laughs> never even found their bodies because the gnome's venom dissolved organic tissue. What did the scripted look like? It was reportedly a small creature with webbed fingers and a protruding forehead and a gangly little thing. Quite scary to look at. A couple of campers found it when it was already dying. They heard an odd wailing in the woods and followed the sound. They were scared and wrapped it in tarpaulin to suffocate it. Oh my god. It still took the gnome of Jeroma an entire day to die. If the body of the creature was found, why aren't there detailed illustrations of it in science textbooks, confirming the existence of this very little species? Yeah, why not? Alas, the first scientist who got his hands on the creature's corpse put it in a jar of formaldehyde, thinking that would detoxify the gnome's venom. Instead, all the venom leaked out of the creature's teeth and into the surrounding liquid, dissolving the creature itself. Oh. A poetic end, perhaps, but a real loss for science. Alas, always alas, and then it was gone. Isn't that overly convenient? It's very convenient that it just disappeared, nothing like it was seen again. No, 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 it was a perfectly good explanation. Stop being so skeptical. Sure, a perfectly good explanation. It dissolved in its own venom. Go on then. Ask about more gnomes or whatever. You're such a bitch. Well, are there any invisible cryptids? What an interesting question. And the answer is yes, there are. <sighs> of course. All fairy tales have someone or something invisible in them. You're right, Kim. It's childish, but I need to know. Shush, Kim. She's gonna tell me about the invisible cryptid. What is it? It's the cold de Mama Dakwa. It's... Name means thin whisper of sound, and that's precisely what it is. Self-replicating sound waves, invisible and intangible. <sighs> the cold de mama is very afraid of us, which makes it incredibly difficult to track. What does it um sound like? Could it be here? Right now? Could it be here? It could be. As I said, it could be everywhere. <laughs> and we wouldn't know any better. It could be ringing all the days of our lives and nights. What does it um, sound like? Like nothing. It's such a high-pitched sound that us humans can't hear it, nor can other animals. Um... It could be ringing right outside your window and you wouldn't even know it. it could be anywhere. Everywhere, even. Fine, I'll bite. <laughs> How can an animal be a sound? Many scientists have asked the same question. Some have claimed that it isn't itself a sound, but a tiny corpuscle that emits sound waves. But there's no evidence to support this theory. 
Well, what evidence is there of this animal being a sound? Plenty. It's the evidence that led to its discovery. In the 20s, a group of areopagi ornithologists, that is, scientists who study birds, were trying out a new recording technology for capturing sounds outside the range of human hearing. Mm -hmm. When playing back recordings they had made in the foothills of the Ea mountain range, they noticed certain anomalies, patterns that seemed random at first, but on closer examination, were consistent with the waveforms of songbirds. Mm hmm Songbirds? The scientists soon discovered they could track and even predict what appeared to be feeding, mating, and migration patterns based on sound waves in a strictly delimited range of ultrasonic frequencies, even higher than those of the highest-pitched bat calls. She transforms, when speaking about these strange animals, into a confident woman. Aww. They realized that they had discovered a new species and called it the Col de Mama d'Aqua, after the Paracanassian name for the Voice of God, which is said to be very silent. Wow. Mm -hmm. They grew quite obsessed with these little birds. <laughs> Even though they couldn't see them, they could distinguish among individual birds and even began to name some of them. Name them. Sequester, Time, Joss Can. Those are but some of the Mamadakwa they followed individually. Whoa, okay. Thanks, Cars. Why is the Mamadakwa so afraid of us? That is a sad story. Oh. A group of university students assisting with the field work in their enthusiasm for the project, and no doubt because they were preoccupied with impressing their professors, nearly drove it to extinction. Extinction? They tried to communicate with it and had no other means but sound. So they started sending out sound waves at frequencies they thought might match the Mama Dakwas. And what happens when a sound wave meets another sound wave of the same frequency, dear? It dies. This lady really should be a teacher. She's really good at the explaining things thing. They cancel each other out? Exactly. And these tests were performed so recklessly that when they happened upon the right frequency, well, they wiped out most of the population. Oh. Great regret washes over her. A wending cloth. After that, the corpuscle appears to have migrated elsewhere. There have been recordings of anomalies similar to those spotted in Ea, but they've been few and far between. It's impossible to confirm the presence of any stable Kaltamama Dakwa population anywhere. Of course. A common thread in these. Disappearance and unfalsifiability. I like the story, though, ma'am. I'm glad you did, dear. No. Oh, interesting. What about... What about what? Well, this has been educational. Sadly, we need to discuss something else. Of course, dear. Well, that's all I got for now. Come on, Kim. We gotta go to bed. Wait, I don't have a room here anymore, do I? Or I think I do. Is this my room? See you in the morning, Kim. Love you, bye-bye. Let's see. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. No. Okay, let's go to sleep and let's hope my body doesn't try to kill me again. Where's my thing? Oh, it gives me pollution. This gives me drama though. You know what? Oh, that's very strange looking. <laughs> I'm really sad I don't have a hat anymore, though. I'm very sad about it. Wait. My shoes give me empathy. All right. The bed is still cold from the broken window, and not too inviting. But it's yours. You've earned it. Let's go to sleep. Sure hope my body doesn't... It's not easy, but your bones are so tired from what feel like weeks of work on the case. You have to try. 
after what feels like hours, you feel you might be sleeping. Oh? Please, please, just let Thoughts, me rest. baby. Fuck! A million little lights in the dark. <laughs> You're one fine instrument, brother. All those faces and all those names. All that laughter and screaming and scheming around. Every corner and every street. Hello to you too, ancient reptilian brain. Recorded in you forever on Ferrate. Spinning in eternity, spinning on empty, spinning, spinning, tell me, am I dreaming? No, you're spinning tapes at the discotheque. The great unceasing disco of the mind. The flash. The bang! The endless learning experience. Spinning in eternity, spinning on empty. On and on it goes. For untold hours. At the disco where you first asked her to dance. Oh god. Rising. Rising. Above the dark curvature. The great wingspan of sleep, studded with stars. Behold, there are millions of them down there. The first time, the last time, the smoke in her mouth, the plotted flowers, the faces turning, changing. What is it? It's the world, Harry boy. And you're made of it. Oh my god. Every day you're out there, you make more of yourself from it. I'm afraid you can't be unmade now. Um? You can never forget this shit. The colors, the voices, the rain, the snow, I don't want to, it's beautiful. The endless visions erase them. I don't want to, it's beautiful. Beautiful! It's stuck on loop, whirling, spitting out words and images. Whirling in rags? You're the son of the world again. Harrister, a ceaseless agent. Picking up litter and old newspapers. Collecting hey. your little bubblegum wrappers and idiotic picture postcards. Hey, 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 hey. Meaningless, meaningless keepsake. I do it for the money, man. Reading your awful letters and recalling things, aren't you? The endless names of the world. An address book you are. The map of a city. That's right, I am an agent of the world. What if I want to be the agent of nothing? I am an agent of the world. You'll go insane if you keep going like this. One more day, and you'll be in the loony bin. I just know you will. And for what, brother man? For the working class. For the money, baby. Solving your little crossword <laughs> puzzles. Doing your tasks. Crossing names off lists. Trying to become some sort of world detector it won't make it okay it won't put smoke back in her mouth i'm building communism for all this time we won't fail just looking out for my economic self-interest forget politics i'll never sleep if i keep on like this I'm building communism there he goes again he's a real political animal our harry <laughs> he still doesn't see that it's the world Changing around him. I mean... He's got no idea what he's in for. Why? Cause only love can break your heart. Feel the pillow under your cheek. Beep, beep, beep. The alarm is ringing, Harry. The disco circus goes on and on. You barely slept three hours last night. You can do it. It's nothing. Do it for the city. Go. Let's go, Volition. Do it for the picture puzzle. Put it all together. 
solve the world, one conversation at a time. Open your eyes. We are solving the world. My dreams suck ass. Rise and shine, comrade. It's time to get to work. What's going on? Despite all the thinking you've been doing, only 0.0001% of communism has been built. Uh -oh. It's too great a task to undertake alone. You're going to have to get organized. Uh-oh. Organization hasn't exactly been your strong suit, <laughs> historically speaking. Does this mean I need to clean up my hostel room? Judging from the state of my ledger, I don't think that's possible. Does this mean I need to clean? Your level of personal upkeep is irrelevant. All that matters is your commitment to building the World Republic. You must seek out your revolutionary brothers and sisters. Find out oh how much communism they've built. Then together, maybe you'll be able to build as much as 0.0002% of communism. <laughs> but it won't be easy. Decades of persecution by coalition authorities have driven the remaining communists of Martinez underground. They live underground. These communists are <laughs> men. They're mole people. I don't know if I want to go searching for mole people, but I am part of the coalition authorities. Have I been persecuting communists this whole time? Will they help me fire up Moscow, Moscow's socialist sausage grinder? I'm part of the coalition. Possibly. If you have been, it's only because you're a double agent ah. acting in furtherance of your long-term objectives. Listen to this. Do you really think you're the kind of person an underground communist cell would entrust with a mission that requires such discretion? Mm, probably not. Regardless, what's past <laughs> is past. You need to look forward to the work of building communism for all. Will they help me fire up? Just between us, you may want to lay off this grind up the bourgeoisie stuff. <laughs> it's a bit off-putting, even to fellow communists. I don't know if I want to go searching for more people. They're not more people. They're your comrades <laughs> in the eternal class struggle. It's your task to find and join them. Maybe I am a mole person. How am I supposed to find them if they're hiding? Let your nose guide you, detective. <laughs> my nose? You, mu you must mean my nose, as in my huge and highly functioning brain. No, we meant your nose, as in that swollen muck detector in the <laughs> center of your face. It just happens to be perfectly calibrated for sensing communists. We really have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> There's no linkage between ideology and our faction. Well, what does communism smell like? Failure. <laughs> so much failure in my life already. I don't know if I can take any more. Okay, but what does failure smell like? It's a smell you know all too well. Simultaneously repulsive and yet darkly appealing. Musty my God. with a sharp tang, but also a remnant of lost sweetness. Like a rotting mango that's been swaddled in a coat from your grandfather's attic. <laughs> what you're smelling is your own body odor, of course. Nothing a shower and change of clothes couldn't fix. I have changed clothes. People sometimes complain there are no real communists left in Martinez. But you can smell their presence. They're out there, waiting for you to join them. Okay, I'm ready. Let's get organized. First, you'll have to locate the remaining communists in Martinez. When you get near to someone with revolutionary potential, your nose will give you the signal to establish contact. Oh my God. Again, no, it won't. <laughs> Any olfactory response you perceive will be strictly psychosomatic. You could also just look for more tangible evidence of communist activity. Images of Krasmazov and white antlers are usually a dead giveaway. Hang on. What will I do once I establish contact with my fellow communists? You'll discuss the monumental world historical task that lies before you. You'll engage in rigorous and spirited debates about Mazovian theory and practice. But mostly, you'll probably complain about other communists. Isn't that last part kind of counterproductive? Not at all. Complaining about other communists 
is one of the most important parts of being a communist. Well, all right, let's get to it. Here we go. Wake, brave worker. Tis no time for bed. Fight till there's no slaves below and no masters overhead. <laughs> My God. I am not stopping the expression. I do not care to stop the expression. Where is my boyfriend? Kim? Kim? Isn't it like Thursday in game? Aha, uh -huh, there you are. Good morning. Hello, ma'am. Oh, hello, sweetie. So nice to see you again. Well, I have nothing to say to you anymore. How about you? I couldn't possibly shower thanks on you as enthusiastically as my wife has. But I am grateful for your assistance, officer. He tries to play it cool, remain professorial. But inside, this man is itching for some news on those traps. Well, I checked all the traps. Good. Okay. And one of them End. was... And one of them was empty. Completely empty? Yes, there was nothing in the trap. No locusts, no phasmid. No locusts? No phasmid either? That's not ideal, but... It just means the Insulindian phasmid is even more clever than we thought. Oh. Of course, more clever. Kim? You're dealing with a subject near and dear to their hearts. It might behove you to tread lightly. Yes, the Phantasmodea picked off the locust and escaped. This is good news, <laughs> so we'll have to reconsider the design of the traps, make them more secure. Oh, these people. Another trip to the reeds. Yes, that's exactly what it is. What a deft hunter this fast man. I don't know, I'm not persuaded. Are you sure you're all exhausted? All your the alternative explanations? Nope, that's exactly what it is. It's a deft hunter. Of course. Be sarcastic. Hey! Unless you have an alternative hypothesis you'd like to venture, mine stands, okay? I am on your side, Morel. Actually, no. Excuse me for getting emotional. This is a big deal for us. You've helped us twice now, and brought some great news too. My gratitude and the gratitude of the Societe Cryptozoologique de Ravachol is yours. Heartfelt gratitude. But does it feel like closure? What really happened? Kim, we're going to figure it out. Some kind of foul play might be afoot. Theft? Huh. Thank you, it's an honor. We should probably return to our main investigation here. This has been refreshing, but... Helping cryptozoologists isn't really a priority for our organization, is it? The lieutenant looks out the window, impatiently. Develop an alternative theory about the missing locusts. Plus one, enthusiastic about the fast myth. Plus one, something up with the trap. Plus two, Kuno's a hooligan. Plus one, consider the alternatives. Consider the way the empty trap was disturbed. <laughs> as though shaken. Yes. Most likely the hands of a young person. Hands small enough to fit inside the trap, too. You should ask the red-headed boy. I think Kuno. a little... I think a little hooligan called Kuno maybe may have stolen the locusts. A little hooligan? But what would a child want with bags? Oh, my dear Morel. You've been an old man for too long. <laughs> Kids love to torment insects almost as much as they love to torment old folks. I'll talk to the little gremlin and see if anything comes up. Delinquents, my favorite. It doesn't sound like it's really his favorite. <laughs> oh, you've been such a dear to us. Please, let us know whatever you turn up. I have a feeling we're getting so close. We are. Well, I see you've got all the help you need. I'll see you tonight at my place. Let's play suzerainty, but no more field trips for me. After this is your last chance to talk to Gary. Really, Gary? Oh boy. We're getting somewhere here. I'd love to play suzerainty, but... Lena, I'm sorry, but you're not getting anywhere Gary. it was some kids i know the little mutants around here leave anything out in the open and they'll steal it even if it's bugs gary morel it's been fun really but i need a bath and i have deliveries to handle when this tea is done 
I gotta run. No, no. No need to apologize, Geary. You'd be more than helpful. We'll have to take a rain check on that game of Sue's rain tea today, though. We're gonna follow this through. Did you know Geary was hiding the armor? Hell no. I had no idea. And I'm still cross with him, to be honest. It's not like him. He's got his quirks. But dishonesty, disloyalty, are not one of them. Well, something changed. I don't know what got into him, officer. Thank you for letting him off easy. He won't forget it. We'll make sure he won't. I, w I don't even remember how I handled that. But Gary, you piece of shit. Always a pleasure to see an officer of the law. Shut up. I mean, officers. You piece of bastard. Thank you for your cooperation, you piece of ass. Bitch. What about you guys? Again? I can't believe this shit. <laughs> Fine. Yes? What is it? Look, something is really bugging me. Are we or are we not from the same police station? You have blue uniform and mine is black. What does that mean? Uh, it uh, means I'm a patrol officer, sir. Well, uh, are you with him? Of course I'm with him. Why do you ask? He's an asshole. He seems like a cool guy. You look cute together. Nothing, just wondering. He's an asshole. You're an asshole. You know what? Maybe with both assholes. Please, let's not turn this into another exchange, okay? Look, something is really bugging me. Are we or are we not from the same police station? God damn it, you leave her alone. <laughs> Keep your weird bullshit to yourself and be professional for once, for fuck's sake. Can I actually help you with something? Yes, of course. Preposterous. <laughs> I mean, you would remember if they were right who forgets their squad mates that's not possible i do like how this guy is very obviously wearing a wig and everything oh wait no something about this bunch doesn't smell right what do you mean aren't they everett's guys they are but they don't seem too keen to talk with you do they no they don't glenn seems to be contemplating grievous bodily harm while he massages his raw knuckles. Oh. In the far back, Eugene is doing his best to ignore you. <laughs> Meanwhile, Fat Angus keeps shooting you furtive glances and mumbling uneasily to himself. And from his perch at the end of the table, Titus Hardy himself stares at you with a cold contempt that makes you want to leave the cafeteria straight away. Oh my god. Besides, you're pretty sure they consider themselves social democrats. Alright, guess I'll look elsewhere then. What's up? Hi again, Gendarm. What is it about the way he carries himself? Plus one, he's so different. Let's do it. It's the sports. He's <laughs> a sports guy. All about that physical prowess and athletic skill. Uh-huh. Nothing else here. <laughs> Bye-bye, Gendarm. Bye bye, Gendar. God, it's strange listening to all these weird French again. All about the money. This is what I studied law for? <laughs> I'm just gonna save my game. You know. What if I die? I've got nothing to say to you. Okay. Why are you wasting your time? I'm not. What is this? Is it time yet? Behind the dock workers, a ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. <sighs> Minus 12, it's not time yet. Very well then. Hey, what's up? Looks like the circus left town, but the clowns are still here. Oh, God. Weak when you first met. All right. I'm not, I'm not dealing with you, Titus. I'm leaving. Carry on. Wait. I wonder if this guy has anything new. Hello! The man ponders his cooking utensils. And he's got nothing. What about the you door? You see a heavy st- Alright, alright. Listen, I'm getting reacquainted with this game. It's been a while. I have to go sell all my bullshit, though. I need money. I want to play D and D with Kim, and to do that, I need money. Was that? Could it be 
Huh? The Calder Mama Dakwa? No. It's probably just your imagination ringing in your ear. Is it? Is there a ringing? There seems to be an extremely high-pitched ring. <gasps> Ultrasonic. Lena said it was very high-pitched, right? It's like something tickles your ear. Lena also said that it couldn't be heard by any other animal, including humans. What you're hearing must just be a regular bird. Honestly, your ear isn't hearing a whole lot. Yeah. The distant hum of the industrial harbor, the traffic. But, admittedly, there is a high-pitched noise somewhere there too. But then, isn't there always? Wait, Kim, do you hear high-pitched noise? No, I don't hear the Koldo Mama <laughs> And neither do you. Kim! Of course he doesn't. He's deaf. <laughs> Listen closely. There it is again. You're about to rediscover a long lost species. Yeah, but how are you going to catch it? Keep listening. It must be very close. Maybe, just maybe, it will come toward you. What are you doing? <laughs> You're a police officer, not a pansy ornithologist. The only birds you should be looking for are healthy women of childbearing age. No, fuck you. Move your head toward the sound. Oh no, the sound. It's moving away, somewhere over there. Go after it. No, too late. It's gone. There is no ringing anymore. Just the sound of the streets. No, come back, please. Keep your ears peeled, then. If the species really has migrated to Martinez, you're sure to hear it again. Kim, the cold of Mamadak was real. We have to go to Frit. No, wait, there's a thought. Ah! I missed it completely. <laughs> oh my god. I also need to buy, like, a. You know, stuff the for help. machine stands. Your bottles clunk into the machine. Ooh. And the money appears with a satisfying jingle. You're a richer man now. 16 bucks, not bad. What is this? You see several packaged. The packages are small, oh. discreet, sloppily stacked, making them easier to take. You could steal one. Unbelievable. What is that? A colorful display of cigarettes and alcohol bottles light. The bottles wink at you in the light. There. Uh oh. In that dark green glass. All in vain. The great flowing river of warmth. Wine, alcohol. Beer, alcohol. No. Love, alcohol. This is not a good place for a recovering addict. Um, guess not, no. <laughs> I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health. But I guess you already know that. Don't ask. Don't look. Don't do anything here. Just go away. Get back to work. Leave. I need help. The small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the Saint Baptiste Pharmaceutics logo. Can I have a no suffered? Okay, here. Thank I you. I hope Saint Baptiste makes you feel better or something. I'll just, I'll just have one. I don't want to spend too much. I needed to play D and D with Kim. It's a date. Also, can I just say really quickly in on a tangent right now? How? Well, okay. Three T's idiomatic. <laughs> Can I just say really quickly on a tangent how weird it is to be once again in a place where it actually gets dark late? Because when I was in Canada, it got dark at like 4 p.m. And every time I would still be at work at 4 p.m., mind you. And every time I would look outside, I would be like, I feel like my day is over. I feel like it's all gone. Like, what did I do with myself? So it's very good to be here and look outside at like 7 p.m. and be like, oh, it's dark now, because that makes sense. Good God. I don't know if I would ever be able to handle it if I lived in Canada. <laughs> anyway, Kuno. Fuck, does Kuno care? You wouldn't happen to know anything about any missing locusts? No, Kuno doesn't give a fuck about bugs. Oh. So he knows locusts are bugs. <laughs> oh my God, I told you that shit is lame. Shut up, see. Kuno, 
now they're gonna take you to lane prison <laughs> she sounds like she's about to cry out of disappointment at kuno's newfound lameness what's this about no hold on no one is lame here just tell me what happened deny everything kuno you need to lawyer up kuno's not gonna say anything without his lawyer present <laughs> there's definitely something going on here remember his pig's head shack you should check it out okay i'm off kuno doesn't fucking care oh you're gonna care when you know exactly where i'm going kuno where's the locust give me back my cryptid oh you're in trouble kuno it's crawling with locusts in here all around you the hisses and chirps of locusts holy shit the musky air the earthen floor of the shack has been shaped into mounds of mud dotted with little holes for windows like skyscrapers spires of dirt and sand rising Accommodations for their insectoid inhabitants. My God. Well, detective, it appears you've solved the case <laughs> of the locust for the missing locust case, which is a subcase of the imaginary insect case. So at least that's going well. Yes, precisely. That's what I was thinking. Yes, I feel we are nearing a real breakthrough. You think the Insulidian phasmid is nearby? If anything, the presence of the locust points to the opposite. The phasmid did not take the bait from the traps. It was Kuno. The Phasmid doesn't exist. Uh, 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 uh. But what do I know? Use your powers of deduction. You knew the magic bug was nowhere near here. The Phasmid is impairing your judgment. We should talk to Kuno about this. Get him to stop. I'll let you handle the Kuno side of things. You are doing just fine. Thanks, honey. <laughs> hey, D. You missed me um, rambling about how in Canada it gets dark at 4 p.m. <laughs> I am still mad about that. I will forever be mad about that. Of all times that I've gone to Canada, it's always in the fucking winter. So that happens all the time. Anyway, Kuno, you're in trouble. Fuck, does Kuno care? I know you took the locusts from the traps the cryptozoologist set up. Yeah. Kuno took the books. So what? So it wasn't the phasmid. Aww. A wave of disappointment washes over you. I was really hoping it would be the reed plasmid that ate the locust, not you, Kuno. You say you don't give a fuck about bugs, then you go and build a whole bug town. It's not bug town. It's the city of locusts. Oh my god. Locusts aren't just bug shit. They come out of the sky like a fucking shadow. Shit descends. <laughs> shit descends. <laughs> Winter getting dark so early. I know. It's so bad. It messes me up. Stop! <laughs> you stop. It's like they're fucking night. Local city. Night city. City of rage. There's a tug of war over the name of his fantastical city. It's almost too big for his imagination. The girl forces herself to watch <laughs> again. The corners of her eyes twitching from discomfort. Hmm. Well, the City of Rage sounds like a cool place. Oh, Kuno, the pig wants to help you. Oh, that's how lame it is. Please just don't say you're an artist. <laughs> Maybe I am an artist. You hear that, everyone? I'm a fucking artist now. Did he just say I? Kuno usually calls Kuno, Kuno. <laughs> Hold on, did I hear you say it right? You said I. That's great, Kuno. It's cool to make art. Oh, my God, Kuno. He's gonna make you totally lame in like three seconds. Don't let him, Kuno. Yo, fuck you, see. Oh. Kuno can be what Kuno wants to be. Kuno's his own man. Kuno's free. He tears at the buttons of his shirt trying to rip them up, but they don't give way. Kuno made himself into Kuno. Kuno can make himself into anything. Oh Kuno my god. Kuno can make himself into a pig if he wants. Kuno can make himself into a. F Kuno doesn't give a shit. Kuno. But don't make yourself into a pig, Kuno. You'll have to take me away. In it, you hear snow melting, <sighs> dripping from the eaves. Someone closing a window. I'm so sorry for the child. So that's what this is about. That depends on the choices you make, young girl. Me and Kuno have discussed this. I promise I wouldn't do that. I don't believe you. For once, the boy is lost for words. 
He turns completely red now. Oh no! With splotches of white beginning to appear across his face. I need you to stop taking the locusts from the traps. The cryptozoologists are trying to find something very important. Those locusts are bait. I have to ask, what does the city of locusts mean? What's gonna happen to the locust? Well, what does it mean? It don't mean anything. It's shit. Kuro just likes to focus. Kuro likes to concentrate on shit. Build shit when he's zipping hard. Fuck. <laughs> Pig, you really shouldn't have fucked with Kuno City. Now it's all fucking lame. It's not lame. Well, I need you to stop, okay? I don't give a shit. I don't need the locusts anyway. Shit is all lame now. She was right. Kuno, no. The girl's face appears again above the fence, just long enough to make eye contact with Kuno. Well, what's gonna happen to the locusts? Kuno's gonna let the fucking locusts die. Aww. Oh, okay, now that that's settled, I better be off. The fuck are they trying to catch anyway? With the traps? The insulin the enfastment. Hmm. He recognizes the name. Wait. You know what the insulin enfastment is? Bitches think Kuno doesn't know shit. <laughs> the fuck out of here. Kuno's tired of this shit. Kuno. There's silence between the two children. They're not saying anything to each other, nor looking in each other's direction. What happened? I, every time I talk to Kuno, I feel like something has gone wrong. Or like something's happened and I didn't catch it right away. There's just something about Kuno that is like, I want to like him, but I can't because he's such a bitch. But I have to admit, he's a good character. Hey, guess what, ma'am? Oh, hello, sweetie. So nice to see you again. Not you. You then. Hello, officer. I think I almost have it. A new trap design, that is. I know you're skeptical. But I have a good feeling about this. Well, I had a chat with this kid, Kuno. He promised to stop stealing the locusts. So it was just a child. No. Oh. Thank you for telling us, sweetie. This is good news, right? Mm. It means we can try again. Something is secretly gnawing at her confidence. It's not this Kuno kid or the missing locusts. It's something else. Elena? Yeah, you're right. We just need <laughs> to restock the empty trap. Then we'll need to inspect the traps one more time. And then maybe we can. <coughs> um. <coughs> Morel? Darling, I told you to take it easy. You're getting sick. Maybe it's time to go home. You're right, you're right. We can come back next season when it's warmer. No, 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 no. It's not worth risking your health. You should call it a day and go home. I'd like to help, but I have my own things to do. Damn it, maybe I can still restock the traps for you. We've come this far to quit. We've come too far to quit. I'm going to restock the trap. Let's do this. We are getting really carried away with this, aren't we? <laughs> Fine. It's better than having these people get pneumonia on the coast. But after this... Really? It's too much, officer. <coughs> what morale means is... We're grateful for your help. Here's a fresh batch of locusts. Ah! I should slide right down the funnel. No. Thank you again. We will definitely mention you, should this lead to a discovery. <laughs> Not talking co-discovery, of course, but... Uh... Morale. Wow. Co-discovery? You'd be famous. You'd show them all. This does tingle the pleasure center. I'll get going. I want to see the locusts. Carver box with several rows of little holes in the lid. Through, though at first glance the box seems perfectly ordinary, upon closer examination it's obvious that it's been prepared with great care. Let's go, Kim! I wish there was a way to fast travel in this game. And if there is, I am stupid and haven't really seen it. But oh, I am on my fucking way. Let's go! Come on, Kim! Actually, do I have anything to sell over there? I don't think I do. Alright. We are on a mission from God.
There's one trap. Come on, come on. The locusts aren't doing all too well, but they're still in there. This isn't ah. the empty trap. That must have been another one. That one was in Land's End, in the northern tip of this peninsula. Let's go then. We have to go all the way over there. Past my dead car. 